Another error which can happen in our application is when we try to create a movie object with the same name with which we already have a movie available in the MongoDB database. For example, let's go to Postman and let's make a post request to this movies resource in order to create a new movie object. So here we are providing a movie object which we want to create and there we are specifying the name as this name. So with this name, we already have a movie object in our database. Let me actually go to Compass and let me show you that. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you see here we already have a movie with that name. So if I go ahead and if I try to create a new movie object with the same name, you see we are getting an error because with the same name, we cannot create a movie object because if I go to the movie model, there we are specifying the name as unique. So we cannot have two movie objects with the same name in the MongoDB database. And that's why here we have this error. Now this error is a generic error. And this generic error is there because currently we are running our application in the production mode. And when we are running our application in the production mode, this else if statement will be executed. And there this if statement will not get executed because in that case, the error name will not be cast error, right? It is some different error. So this if statement will not get executed and we are calling this prod errors function. If I go to this prod errors function, there we are checking if the error is an operational error or not. In this case, the error is not an operational error. So this error dot is operational. It will return false. It will go to this else part and this generic error message will be returned. But we don't want that. What we want is when such duplicate key error occurs, that means when a user tries to create a new movie object with a name with which we already have a movie object in the database. In that case, we want to return an error message saying that with that name, there is already a movie in the database. So instead of sending this generic error message, we want to send some meaningful error message. Basically, we want to execute this code in that case. And in order to execute this code, we will have to set this is operational for that error to true. Now, to actually see how this errors looks like, let's first stop this process by pressing Ctrl C and let's run this application now in the development mode. So here we are running it in production mode and here I'm going to run this application in development mode. So here we are setting the node environment to development and then we are running it in development mode. So if I press enter, so the application has started in development mode. Let's go to Postman again and let's make a request. And now you can see the complete detail of that error. So here we have the status which is set to 500, which is the default status. We have the error message and the error message says duplicate key error. We have the stack trace and we also have the error object itself. Now for this error object, we do not see any name property here. That's because this error is not something which is caused by the mongoose, but instead the underlying MongoDB driver. So we have learned that Mongoose is basically built on top of a MongoDB driver and it allows us to communicate with MongoDB database with ease. So this duplicate key error is basically thrown by the underlying MongoDB driver and not by the Mongoose. And that's why we do not have a name property here for this error object. So what we are going to do is we are going to identify this error object by using this error code. So for this error, for this duplicate key error, you see, the error code is 11,000 and we are going to use this error code to identify this error and then handle it properly. Let's go to VS code and let's scroll down. So here we are checking if the error name is cast error. Based on that, we are handling it. Let me remove this console.log statement from here. And what I will also do is I will move this code in the same line because here we only have one line of code. So we don't need to include it in curly braces like this. Okay. And let's also remove this console.log statement from here. Now in the last lecture, we tried to create a copy of this error object. And then we tried to use that copy instead of the actual error message. But for some reason, when we try to create a copy of this error object, in that copy, we did not have the name property. So I did some Google search for that. Okay. And there I found this stack overflow answer. So it is opened here. So this guy also is facing the same issue. 
So he's also trying to create an error handler function for Mongoose cast error. And there, the error object does not include a name field that indicates what type of error has happened. So the same problem which we faced in our last lecture. And for the answers, I found few things. So it says that I found out that error.name will only work if you are using the original error object returned from Mongoose. If you are making copy of the object by destructuring it like this, so this is the same way we try to destructure it, this won't include the name property, but we can fix it something like this. Okay, but the reason why while creating a shallow copy, we do not have the name property is explained here. So it says when you create a copy of an object using the object destructuring syntax, you have to keep in mind two things. First, you are creating a shallow copy. And second, you will copy only innumerable attributes. Error.prototype.name is not innumerable. Therefore, it will not be copied into the new object. Okay, so in order to solve the problem, we can create a shallow copy something like this and then it should work. But now I'm not going to create any shallow copy and I'm directly going to work on the original error object which we are receiving for our function. So let me go ahead and let me remove this line of code as well from here. And now let's go ahead and let's handle our duplicate key error. So again, I'm going to write an if statement. In this if statement, we are going to check the error code. So for that, we can say error dot code. If I go back to Postman, there the property name is code. So if it is equal to 11,000, let's go ahead and let's write that condition. In that case, we want to call a function. So here we are going to pass this error object to that function and let's call this function maybe duplicate key error handler. Okay, and to this duplicate key error handler, we are going to pass that error object. Now let's go ahead and let's create this duplicate key error handler function. So here after this function, let's go ahead and let's create this duplicate key error handler function. And there we are going to receive the error object. So I'll simply call it ERR. Again, what we are going to do is from here, we are going to return a new instance of our custom error class. And to this custom error class, to the constructor of this custom error class, we need to pass an error message, which we want to set for the error and also the status code. So for the message, let's go ahead and let's create a variable. Let's call it message. And in the message, let's say there is already a movie with name and then we want to use the name of the movie which we are trying to create and after that let's say please use another name okay so this is going to be our error message now here we need to get the value of the movie name which we are trying to create and then we need to specify it here but how are we going to get that value because this error object does not have a path field or name field but we do have a key value field and from here, we can try to get the value of the movie name, which we are trying to create. Okay, so let me copy this property name from here and there. Let's create a variable. Let's call it name maybe equals. And here we can say error dot key value, which is the property name. And this key value is again an object. And on that, let's try to access the name property. So if I go back again on the error object, we have this key value property. And this key value property has a name property. So we are trying to access the value of this name property here. Okay. Let me go ahead and let me log this value first so that we will see whether we are getting the correct value or not. So here I want to log name. Let's save the changes. And here we have an error. That's because here it should be ERR and not error. Let's try to save the changes again. We still have an error. All right, so here we are not specifying any value. That's why we have that error. Let me also go ahead and let me use this name property here. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's create this variable before this message variable. And now let's go ahead and let's save the changes. All right, so everything is working now. Let's go to Postman. Let's make a request again. We should still get the same error message. Okay, so we are still getting the same error message. But now if we go back to Visual Studio, we do not see anything logged here. All right, that's because currently we are running this application in development mode, right? This error, this function will only get called when we are running this application in production mode because we have written it inside this if statement. 
okay so let me stop this process again okay and let's run it in production mode now now what i'm going to do here is let's go to our package.json file and there we have created this start script and when we are running this start script internally it is going to run this command so here when we use this start script we want to run the application in development mode and we are going to create another script maybe start underscore prod so when we type this command when we run this script we want to run it in production mode okay so here before this node mode let's say set node underscore env equal development and node mon space server dot js and let me go ahead and let me copy this command and i will put it here and there when we run this command we want to run it in production mode okay let's save the changes and here let's go ahead and let's type npm start underscore prod let's press enter and it should be actually npm run start underscore prod okay so now our application is running but some error has occurred that means it is not able to connect to the database but let's first check whether the npm environment is set to production mode or not and here we have this npm env and it is set to production all right let me go ahead and let me run it one more time for that i will simply save the changes and it will automatically run and now we are connected to the database so let's go to postman again let's make a request okay and here we still do not see the name logged here so basically we are trying to log this name and in the response also we are getting the generic error message so something is wrong with our code okay oh all right here we need to set this error object with the result with this function is going to return so here i was using the arrow function but that was the wrong way basically it should be equal to let's save the changes again and let's try it out again let's go to postman let's make a request again here we have this html response which is returned by express so something is wrong with our code again let's go back so here you can see the name is logged properly but after that we have this error invalid status code undefined all right that's because when we are creating an instance of this custom error we need to pass this message so we were not passing it earlier we have just created it and then the status code so here the status code is again going to be 400 that means bad request we have created this name variable to read the name of the movie object which we are trying to create and then we are using that name variable here in our error message now we don't need this console.log statement so let's remove it from here let's save the changes again and let's quickly test it so db connection is successful let's go back to postman let's make a request again and now we are getting the proper error message so it says there is already a movie with name we are millers please use another name okay so in this way now we are also handling the duplicate key error so in production instead of sending a cryptic error message to the client we are sending some meaningful message to the user and based on that he can rectify his errors and then create a new movie object by specifying a unique name for the movie object all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day